All right, we're gonna we'll give it a couple minutes as people still file in here, and then we'll get this going. I don't know about that. I'll just hold on to this. All right, we're two minutes. Yes, we're two. No, not quite. Give it 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, good. That's the way to start. All right. Okay, welcome. Uh, I'm Ed Baldoff with Solid Fire. I'm going to be the moderator, so I don't get an opinion here. Um, we'll start with a few stock questions. We'll have everybody introduce themselves. We'll start with a few stock questions that, that we've written up or I've written up. And then if you guys have questions, um, they want us to use the mic in the, the aisle way there. So just jump up and stand behind the mic and I'll call somebody. So let's start with, no, uh, <laughs> the, the illustrious John Griffith and then we'll work our way across. Uh, everybody introduce yourself, uh, what company you're with, where you reside, like where you live kind of thing. Uh, what's your background? Are you an ops person, programmer, systems networking, that kind of stuff. And then uh, how'd you get involved with Cinder, John? All right, uh, my name is John Griffith. I work at Solid Fire. Um, I'm uh, from Boulder, Colorado. Well, kind of Boulder, outside of Boulder. Um, so I've been working on Cinder since the beginning. Uh, so about four years, a little over four years ago, I started on OpenStack and started the Cinder project with a number of folks that are on this stage. So, Hi, uh, my name is Zhiteng Huang. So um, I'm from China. i based in Shanghai. I work for eBay. I um, I work in the DevOps manner, so we have a private call. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> um, Patrick East um, from or work with Pure Storage um, from Bellevue, Washington. Um, I work. My background, I guess, is mostly in like embedded applications, but now doing cloud application stuff. So. Okay. I'm Sean McGinnis. I work for Dell um, in Minnesota. Uh, I Work in applications too. Uh, currently focusing on OpenStack Cinder and the PTL for the Mintaka release. Hi everyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I break mics and sound systems. Um, I'm Mike Perez, uh, former PTL for the Mintaka. Or sorry, not Mintaka. Don't <laughs> quote me on that. Sorry, Kilo Liberty. I'm working on that. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, I've been involved with OpenStack since uh, 2010 with Nova Volume and all that stuff and previous working on Driver and things like that. Uh, currently I work for the OpenStack Foundation uh, focusing on cross-project. Um, I like cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. I am Jay Bryant, I uh, work with IBM, the uh, liaison basically between Cinder and the IBM driver developers. Uh, based out of Rochester, Minnesota, and been working on Cinder for about three years now. Um, how did I get into it? I got really lucky, and my manager picked me to work on Cinder, and I've gotten to work with these fine people, so it's a good thing. Uh, I'm Xin Yang. I'm a technologist from the office of the CTO from EMC. Uh, I'm also a core reviewer in Cinder and Manila. I live in Massachusetts in the US. Um, I wrote uh, Cinder Driver uh, for, uh, let's suppose, EMC storage and contributed back in Grizzly. That is how I got started. And since then, I uh, shifted my focus to work on core contributions. Uh, my work includes consistency group support, uh, incremental backups, and non disruptive backups. Hello, my name is Walt Boring. I work for HP. Uh, I've been working on uh, Cinder since the Grizzly time, time frame. Uh, along with Kurt Martin, uh, we added fiber channel support to uh, OpenStack way back when. Um, I support the three-part drivers and left-hand drivers, and I work on OS Brick. All right, cool. I'm figuring out who I'm going to ask. Who, who's the vi first victim here? And I think that's you. 
Patrick. Uh, so the first question is what happened in Liberty? So specifically, what were you working on and, and how did it what, how did it turn out? Where's that? Sure. All right. All right. So uh, Liberty um, spent probably the first you know, half of it doing pure storage stuff. Uh, we added fiber channel driver, things like that. Um, a lot of, you know, probably 50% of my time throughout the whole release working on CI system stuff. Um, so it's probably a common theme if you ask any of the guys who have to maintain one of those. Um, and also adding in support for image caching to Cinder. Um, so we got that in for Liberty, a new feature, caching. What, what does that feature mean exactly? Sure, yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> but previously, uh, or well, if you don't turn it on, it's disabled by default. Um, every time you want to create a volume from an image, we download it over HTTP from Glance, store it in a temporary file, attach the volume to a DD, copy the image data over the volume. Uh, so if you want to spin up like 10, 20 VMs really quickly back on volumes, uh, you do that 10, 20 times as opposed to something smart. Uh, Not which, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very slow. Very slow. Uh, whereas all, pretty much every one of our storage solutions that, you know, the people who pay us to work on OpenStack, uh, they support doing really fast image clones or, you know, some, some sort of way to, on your, on your storage array, the storage backend, you can clone those quickly. Uh, so now we'll download it once, keep it in the cache, in subsequent requests, we'll just do the clone. Uh, so, you know, after you've done it once, it's just send your database calls and, you know, whatever management APIs you have to do for the backend. So this is not going to involve going through Glance or the Glance backend store or whatever. It always stays within your actual backend storage. Does smart copy on write, and it's a generic solution, which is why it's tremendous. So, okay. Walt, yeah. what did you what did what did you wind up working on in Liberty, and give us a little? Yeah. Okay. So um, I focused primarily on uh, finishing the project of OS Brick, which is something that we all kind of were involved with for a long time. Um, so what was left in Liberty was to um, extract the Libvirt volume drivers as uh, that were in Nova, um, because a while back we created the OS Brick project that was part of Cinder, and in uh, uh, Kilo we extracted that from Cinder and created a separate project called OS Brick, which is in GitHub, and it's owned by the Cinder project uh, team. And so, what I focused on was extracting that same code that lived in Nova, um, and uh, made Nova liver volume drivers use OS Brick. Thanks, Walt. Uh, Xing. Uh, so uh, I worked on um, adding support for non-destructive backup. Uh, so previously, you know, when you do a backup, you have to detach the volume. Uh, so now you can actually backup a volume when it's still attached. Um, and also, I added a, um, a new API to support clone CG, which allows you to create a new CG from an existing one. Cool. Jay, you got it, sure? You got it. Well, I, I helped encourage John to work on Replication V2. <laughs> well, I you know, helped keep that going. So for those of you that know the history there, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then... Came from Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I've also worked with um, my team to kind of finish cleaning up Oslo libraries in Cinder, removing stuff that we didn't need anymore and getting, um, working on improving the way that we're handling uh, config generation in Cinder. So those were a couple of the major work items we hit during cool. Liberty. John, you wanna not give away our session on Thursday, but talk about replication sure. for a second. Uh, <laughs> so, I, oh, perfect segue. Well, yeah. for, for Liberty, specifically Liberty, but what did you do in Liberty? In I worked I on know. a bunch of bugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually spent a lot of time working on bugs in Liberty. Um, and I worked on replication. So we did V2 of the replication feature in OpenStack, or in Cinder. Um, we'll talk, I won't go into detail, but basically there was a replication feature in V1, uh, or V1 replication in OpenStack already, um, but it was a little difficult to implement and stuff. So we kind of regrouped as a team, and I tried to lead an effort to help everybody kind of get on the same page and agree on a core implementation that everybody could adopt. Um, and we just focused on doing the core piece of it for Liberty. And then in Mataka, we'll, everybody's 
almost everybody already has a driver submission. So when you say core, there's no drivers out there that Correct. support replication so today. So I, I was very unpopular because my, my stance was that no driver should actually implement it yet because it wasn't finished until two weeks before we were actually cutting the RC candidate, uh, which in my opinion, releasing a brand new feature, especially a major one, two weeks before RC is stupid. So <laughs> you shouldn't do it because that customers kind of will be very unhappy. So. Cool, anything else? Nope. All right, Mike, I'm gonna let you summarize since you were the PTL for Liberty. Any, any more? Uh, yeah, all these people did all the work. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I, I just look pretty. Um, but no, seriously, um, so I mean, sort of, I guess my own work is just making sure that the things work, um, bringing them into test environments, making sure that the documentation is there. Um, and I'm trying to think if anything else was missed. Oh, yes, we had some things that actually didn't land and that I was actually actively testing but wasn't involved to actually allow them to be merged in time. Um, there are a uh, variety of, I, you probably hear me preaching a lot, especially on Twitter about rolling upgrades and that being a boring thing to keep talking about. Um, but the great thing that uh, this, that this community is actually working on right now are is actual solutions to solve that, not just within Cinder, but within other projects. Um, it's not myself that's working on it. Um, I'm probably going to butcher the name, but Thane Fam is, yes, thank you. Yeah, Thane Fam uh, for doing all the work on making the services actually independent of uh, you know the databases, as well as making the services themselves independent of each other uh, by having RPC compatibility. All these solutions are things that are either eventually or have already been brought into Oslo so that other projects could have a base foundation because I do respect the fact that every single project is going to be unique. Thank you. All right, well, and you, uh, you did the V2, the API V2 stuff, right? That was, that was kind of your... That was my thing, yes. Yes, all right, so don't, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about my talk. I, and I, I did the, it, well, it worked in DevStack shirt. That is like my only good contribution to this community. All right. So, <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about my talk now a little bit. Uh, I'm going to turn over to Sean because I'll give you, let you give a summary sure. and call out whoever else is going to be guilty. Yeah. John's always guilty. So. Uh, well, a lot of it is continuing the work that's been mentioned here, the replication piece, because it came in so, in, so close to the end. Uh, now, I'd like to see some drivers actually implement that. Uh, see, you know, flush out the issues there. It, it, the spec is great. It's when you get into the implementation that you find out what, what you're missing, what you didn't think of. Uh, rolling upgrades, uh, there, there's some work being done of actually being able to test that a little more thoroughly. Uh, that'll be great to have in the community. Uh, actually being able to have some backing data that, that will work for end users. Um, and like everything, I expect there's probably some work that we'll have to do for that. Uh, the third-party CI, we've come a long way on that. Uh, there's still issues. Uh, I'd say everyone's, everyone's done a great job implementing their third-party CI. Now we need to start refining that and making sure that the results that we get from that are consistent and at the point where if someone submits a patch and there is a failure out there with someone's third-party results, uh, that it's not just ignored because, oh, that one always fails. So I'm not going to look at it. Uh, and I guess I'll open it up to the team here as well. Um, you know, we have a lot of different initiatives going on. Uh, anything we want to highlight? I, one thing I forgot to mention that we worked on in Liberty is getting migration and retype. That's been a, a constant source of, of bugs and concern. We've been working on that and we're continuing now. Um, you know, as uh, IBM contributions going into Metaka to finish up that reporting back to the users better how migrations and, and retypes are progressing and getting that code out there. So that's a continued focus. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, I have something to add about uh, what's been done for Liberty is a uh, big step forward that we have support for generic migration, which means for those storage backends doesn't support iSCSI or Viper Channel. Now, as long as they have a connector in our uh, OS brick library, then they can do the migration um, from one backend to another one. Yeah. Why, why exactly did we do the OS brick library? What benefit did that bring other projects? Um, for example, if we, um, before we have OS brick, uh, we actually have code duplication in other projects like Nova. 
So Nova actually has a copy of our um, synthesis code to do the volume attach, volume detach. And anytime do, when we want to fix a bug in Nova project, it takes a very long time, much longer than what we can do in, in within the project. So now we um, extract the part into a library, which means that we have that all, all in own control. So that's a big win. Yes. Um, so, so we are talking about things in Mataka and yeah, stuff? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm going to steal your thunder, I guess. I don't know, no, or unless you were up to I don't speed. Have thunder. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, I have thunder. Okay, so, um, so uh, Michael Dulick has been uh, spearheading a lot of the HA um, involvement inside of Cinder itself. The idea to have a multiple volume manager processes that can talk to the same backend storage without clobbering each other. And I mean, there are other things that help with that initiative. I understand. But um, there's a big piece that was actually solved, or I won't say solved, but there was a gr really great consensus that came from the summit today that I wanted to highlight that uh, for the distributed lock manager, um, there was a consensus that we will start having abstract layers for the different lock managers so that we can begin to make progress on this sort of initiative to have multiple volume managers, which is a huge win, huge HA win, and all that stuff in center. So, um, Anybody else want to comment on HA? I'll let that one lie. Uh, we, we've, a lot of people have been spending a lot of effort on it as well. Gorka uh, has been doing yes. a lot of work with that too. Yes. So, Scott. And Scott, yeah, Scott D'Angelo. So um, the whole community uh, is really working on this effort and, and uh, we hope to get something completed for Mataka. I think that would be a big win for Cinder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I All right, so use the mic and say what you say. Yeah. I said. <laughs> And I'm going to propose a completely different solution. So, <laughs> so agreement is not agreed. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just one other thing I want to highlight as well. Uh, Scott D. A., uh, Scott D'Angelo and uh, others have been looking at micro versions in the API. Uh, a lot of work has been done there. I believe in Nova, um, Manila as well. What, what does micro versions get us? So micro versions uh, allows us to add. Uh, changes between API releases without having to come out with an entirely new API. Uh, we have an issue right now, um, something just to discuss today, we had the V1 API, uh, there were some issues with that. Mike did a lot of work on implementing the V2 API. We'd really like everyone to use that V2 API, but we have a lot of users out there on older releases still using V1, and, and for whatever reason, they can't migrate off of that. Um, so we'd like to get rid of that code, but we can, that's set. Um, that's one piece of it. And then moving forward and being able to add new features, uh, we need a way to, to have some flexibility in what we expose through the API without having to re-implement things and cause breaking changes. So one of the things microversions in the API will allow us to do is, is add things, remove things with a, uh, with a little less burden on long-term maintenance, uh, kind of. <laughs> one, one thing to add to that is if, if you look at, so the way the API code used to be structured, if you look at V1 and you look at V2 and you do an LS on the directories, it's about 90% code duplication across the two. Um, so it's kind of silly the way we've done it in the past. And the thing with microversions, what that allows you to do is when you implement a change to a specific API call, you can just update that particular call version and still have the old call available as well without having two branches or two copies of the same code. For a lot of you, from a user's perspective, this may not seem like a big deal, um, but actually, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's actually a really big deal for the user, uh, and that's, that's what's driving this, is making an improvement for users. Yeah, it also prevents us from uh, the need of uh, releasing a V3 just because we make a change at the API, and which means a lot of work for clients, uh, which is kind of a, a nightmare for, for operators too. So I think this is a good thing. And a third copy of all of the code. A third <laughs> copy, yeah, exactly. So yeah. while well, you have the mic, uh, anything about multi-attach and the work that you're doing in the Nova stuff, you want to comment on that? Is that going to hit my talk? Awesome. <laughs> So, so there was a, um, uh, a mailing list post um, last week um, 
someone posted uh, about uh, trying to coordinate that effort uh, in the Nova. Uh, He's pro inner project coordinator, right? No, it was someone else. It, uh, it wasn't Mike, um, and I just uh, wrote wrote the guy today asking, you know, if he's here because I w I'm very interested in that. But uh, basically, multi-attach. Um, we implemented that Cinder a couple releases ago, and we've tried very hard to get the code in Nova to land, um, especially in, in Liberty. But uh, it the the amount of work kind of had scope creep quite a bit, and and it kind of blew up a little bit on us. So. Um, there's still an ongoing effort to try and get multi-attach uh, implemented on the Nova side so we can cl complete the end-to-end -end, uh, capability. We're, we're still very interested in, in making that happen. Cool. Thanks for the comment. Um, uh, attaching your volume to multiple VMs. Uh, if you want to do a clustered uh, file system, yeah. Cool. I'll use this opportunity to point out you do need a clustered file system for this. <laughs> There's been some yes. confusion on that. You cannot just attach the same volume to multiple we, hosts. We and that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. EXT4 will fall completely on its face yeah. if, if that's what you're putting on your volume. Or SQL Server cluster. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Um, hand the microphone to Shing, please. Shing, you've been working on backup a lot. Is there anything for Mitaka that you're planning to do or thinking about or, or anything else you want to talk about in Mitaka? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm planning to export for uh, backing up snapshot right now, um, you can back up a volume, um, but you can't really back up a snapshot directly yet. So this just uh, gives the user uh, another layer of uh, data protection. Thanks, um, Patrick. Sure. Right. So uh, a couple of smaller things, I guess, on my plate. Uh, so one thing we tried to add in L that didn't make it, uh, which we're going to get this time, is trim support. Um, <laughs> That's, you know, those of us with flash arrays really want that, uh, and users that pay for arrays probably also want that. Um, so that's work in progress. Uh, we're getting there. Um, is that in Cinder, or is that? It is so, in Cinder already. Yeah, so we landed the Cinder part in Liberty. The Nova side is on its way in for M. Um, and the other thing, so we have a session sort of on top of micro versions, uh, experimental APIs, maybe, you know, I don't want to say it's happening, but uh, you know, if you guys have interest in that, we're going to have a session on that, so they may be there, um, which would be nice for things like when we merge giant new features two weeks before we release. Uh, yeah, you, you, <laughs> might, you might want to explain a little bit more about what that means. Oh, yeah, sure. So uh, sort of modeling after what Manila's done with, on top of their micro versions, they allow for experimental APIs, basically things that they've added, they've merged into the core service that if you really want to, you can start using these, but they're kind of like a warning label. It says, hey, these we reserve the right to change these. They're not totally finished. We know that. Um, it's a work in progress. Um, the alternative is times like you know for replication or uh, other features like that. If it's too close to the end of the cycle, we don't have enough testing. We don't have enough drivers. We either merge it and you have this feature that somebody could potentially try and use, but it may not work, or you just hold the feature for another six months uh, and slow down testing again. So it's, that's kind of the goal with those. I guess. Jay, do you have anything to say about Mataka? I think I recovered my points of interest. So <laughs> All right. thanks, man. And John, last but not least. Yeah. You guys. Um, yeah, I got a whole list of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so, uh, the most interesting one for me is something I've wanted to do for a while is um, I want to actually decouple Cinder a little bit more from OpenStack, um, make it more of a standalone service that's consumable for clouds other than OpenStack, um, bare metal, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, there's actually some work we've finally gotten started in the Liberty release to do that for bare metal. Um, I think we have a long ways to go, and there's a lot of potential and a lot of cool things we can do. Um, and we're going to talk about those things this week and hopefully come up with some good ideas. So hopefully it's finally going to happen. And I'll just shameless plug for the uh, session we're having about replication. If you want to see how it's supposed to work, uh, John and I are going to talk about that on Thursday. So It's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love the heckler to show up and we'll, 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 uh, we'll put him to work. Um, all right, so Jitong, 
you have not said much, so I'm going to ask you the kind of throw you the hot potato. Uh, what do you think Cinder needs for Docker support? And there's a microphone over there. Um, I we'll pass the potato around if you're done. But yeah. Okay. Um, so there is some two. There are several different solutions to you know incorporate Docker with to storage. So some said you you should use share file system, like like Manila or something. Some said you can work with um, Cinder because you can uh, attach the volume to something and then detach once they finish, something like that. So um, within eBay, we're still evaluating solutions like that. So I'm open to uh, any solutions that works for us. Um, okay. It doesn't have to be specific. You bring a unique uh, perspective to the panel here because you are an end user. So that's why I'm asking yes. you some of these questions, so. Yes, so I think myself is a different because I used to work for Intel, it's still not um, storage manager. Um, and I mostly focus on um, the core piece of the Cinder, not the driver part. So I yeah. try to contribute that piece. Okay. So one, one thing on I want to add. Scheduler work. Yeah. 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 So being very humble. He actually <laughs> wrote our entire scheduler code base. So, um, which was a pretty amazing feat, and everybody should give him a hand for it. But <laughs> um, to the to the Docker question, yeah. um, we'll that I kind of left that out. That's actually one of the things about decoupling services that I was talking about. Um, that's one of the big wins, actually. Um, there's different ways, everybody knows containers are the hot new thing. Uh, there's different theories on whether the containers live in OpenStack, whether Magnum manages them, whether, you know, whatever you might do. Um, my opinion is, is you should be able to do whatever you want. Uh, one of those things, you know, Docker has the ability to do volume plugins now. Um, having a Cinder plugin talk to all the Cinder drivers would allow all of us to just continue on upstream give a solution for that. So that's one of the impetuses for that whole effort. Over on this side, anybody want to comment on Docker and OpenStack? That was a better answer than mine, so cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it gets to, I don't know a lot about the details that are going to need to be done, but I think, you know, it gets to the discussion of what do we have to do as a Cinder project to be relevant and continue to move forward. And we need to be looking at these technologies like Docker and what's coming down the road, making sure that we're able to work with them so that we continue to grow. So that was a good answer, John. All right, let's change to a different, if, oh, if you got, no, go ahead. I just, uh, I just see that uh, on the mailing list, they were uh, the, the ops, they are trying to uh, propose a tag called the containerization just to see if a project can be um, deployed in a container and uh, in production. So I don't know if that's going to be approved or not, but if so it is, then yeah. it's a good tag for us to have. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's kind of a different, that's the other side of it. Um, and that's one of, the, that's one of the things that's come up in HA solution ideas and things like that, is actually containerizing the service as opposed to building a bigger service and an HA service, actually break the service down and containerize it and, and let another tool, whether it be like a Mesosphere or a Kubernetes or something like that, let that actually take care of the HA pieces and, and the scaling pieces, right? Um, so yeah. All right, so we'll change directions here a little bit and talk about CI systems. So you guys wrote up some questions here. Uh, we got a lot of third party CIs. Uh, what's your opinion on, is everybody getting it right? Is it working? And I'm going to hand this to Sean because you're going to have to be the enforcer this time. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, there, I think everyone's done a lot of good work getting their CI systems to where they are today. Um, there's still definite improvement uh, that needs to be done, I think. Um, you know, the main thing being the results of them being useful, of being able to see a failure and not just blow it off, of actually looking at the failure and figuring out what happened. Um, you know, our, our, our third-party CI, just like uh, a lot of other ones, still has random failures. Um, makes it a little less likely that someone's actually going to take a look at that when their patch is submitted and, and gets a failure result. Uh, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces. I think there's just different areas we just need to work on refining how it works and 
you know, people like uh, Rami have, have done a lot of great work in starting to standardize the CI solutions so that there's at least consistency across everyone's uh, CIs. And, and hopefully that leads towards, uh, you know, bug fixes, improvements, and making everybody's CI work better. So one, one thing I want to add to that, just so people know and don't get the wrong idea, um, the failures that some of these systems are seeing and stuff like that, the intermittent failures, they're not actually that the back-end device doesn't work and, and that that's failing. They typically end up being things like the actual Jenkins deployment failed. It's something in the automation or in the CI itself. That's the piece that's failing. So if it was the driver or the back end wasn't working, well, we would have yanked them and thrown them out already. So, <laughs> so that's not the problem. Uh, so I just want to make sure that's clear. You going to throw anybody out this, this round? Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, I think the policy we had in the past, uh, it worked. And we need to enforce having third-party CI running. And if we can't get involvement uh, from a, a vendor to make sure that they're at least working on it, then we might have to take their, their driver out of the code tree. Well, and I, I think one of the good things that the core team has been doing, I look at Walt specifically, <laughs> <laughs> is, um, <laughs> you know, as, we, as, as code is getting pushed up now, if your CI system doesn't run against your own code, we're not going to give it a plus one or, or merge it at all. So that's been... Uh, you know, it's been painful for some people, like me, um, but it's given the, the right tool to go back and say, look, this is serious and we need to be doing this and, and getting the code, um, you know, run, tests running frequently so that we know that things are running. So for everybody else, it's something to watch for. No, we got till 10 after. So any questions from the audience? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I apologize if this it doesn't make sense in context, but hopefully you guys can add the context. My question is about the scheduler. Um, there's been some ongoing work. I've seen the mailing list. Nova's looking at its scheduling. How, yeah, I see you handing the mic there. Uh, so what's the current state of the, the sender schedule? You're talking about multiple volume managers. One of the jobs of the volume manager, I believe, used to be picking the host, uh, which who you're going to schedule the volume on. Uh, is th there been any work going on that, or what's the current state of the schedule? How does that work, or is that even still a thing in Cinder? Um, so, I think that was done in Keo that we add a support for pools, so the so the volume manager doesn't have to do any scheduling. So right now, volume driver will have to um, tell what how many pools that this driver has, and then that scheduler made a decision. So we have. Yeah. No. No. So each pool will be treated like the um, the whole storage backend. So it's just like you have multiple storage backend that single driver can talk to. It's just that you can even create a type that is specifically mapping to one of the pool, not the entire backend. So our, our model is a little bit different at this point. So all of our stuff actually goes through the scheduler um, before it gets to the manager. The manager Manager right now is actually just kind of a, a, a shim <laughs> uh, of common code that goes into the drivers. Um, and as, as he was saying, the basically each pool looks like its own independent backend um, and is treated as if it was, was a backend by itself. Um, the problems that they're trying to solve on the Nova side are a little bit different um, than what we've got. And they're also looking at doing things like more of a, if I recall, um, a common scheduler, like an Oslo version of scheduler code. Um, but they have some different problems that they're trying to solve that we don't really have. We don't have the problem of scaling to a thousand backends, right? We don't do that sort of thing in Cinder. Most customers have one. <laughs> they might have three or four. Um, but, you know, Nova, they're looking at I'm going to have a thousand compute nodes that I have to schedule across. So that's a different problem. John. Uh, regarding the uh, thank you. Uh, following on the aspect of scheduling on the storage pool as opposed to the host, how does it apply to migration then? So would we be migrating between storage pools then? Uh, 
Um, yes, because we support like migrate from one storage backend like Solidifier to EMC, so we definitely support migrating from one pool to the other. It's just the problem that if the storage backend is able to do a create a shortcut for you, like if th these are the two pools from the same backend that that was created on the same um, storage backend, for example Dell or EMC, then they might have a chance to give you a shortcut to as accelerate your the process. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. More comments on that? Yep. Any more questions from the audience? We're, we're supposed to go till 10 after. I see a clap starting, so it might be, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might be top of the beer hour. Uh, I was going to throw out one more question around testing, if you guys didn't. So what, what do you think the current state of testing is? And I'll throw the hot potato, like, how are we going to test replication? since the reference architecture doesn't have replication. Uh, Walt, you're grinning. Ching, you're grinning. <laughs> you guys can start the comments down on that end. Yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm grinning just because it's a, it's a difficult problem. You know, we're, we're still working on um, actually implementing our replication code, and we're doing a lot of manual testing right now. Um, but obviously, we need to get to a point where we can add that to the CI system. Um, it, that one is a, is a very difficult problem because we have multiple um, arrays that we support and we need a lot of hardware to do the replication support because we support iSCSI and Fiber Channel for two different arrays and that requires a lot of, a lot of hardware That's for us to the deal question. with. Yeah, it's, it, it, and, and we're struggling with that right now um, because we have a lot of different scenarios that we want to test, not just with replication. You know, we, we want to test multi attach multi-path on and off for iSCSI and fiber channel. So our number of CI jobs is kind of blowing up a little bit. And it's it's a good problem to have, but um, yeah. Shing? So, so I think uh, to, to test replication, we need to provide API to do a, like a test field over, because otherwise, if we test it, field over, we also want to feed back, right? We need to also be able to have that supporting the API as well. OK. I'll just go down the line. Jay, you got? Well, I, I guess kind of a question out to the rest of the core panel. Is it something that we need to look at each of the um, each of the different driver CI systems being in charge of setting up their own replication test? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, but so here's the. But. <laughs> so there's What's a the but? There's a but. What's the but? I I would say that since we've got ourselves into this mess where there are features that we are allowing vendors to have in their drivers that aren't in the reference implementation, which I think is a horrible thing we should have never done. Um, when are but, you going to write the replication but, for the reference implementation, Exactly, John? yep. So, um, but we're there. We've, we've done that. We broke our rules, and, and we've done that. So what that means now is that exactly what you guys are saying, um, in my opinion, if you want to talk about a feature like replication or consistency groups or something like that. That means that you should tack on automation and testing to your CI that runs that. And that's an easy, there's a process to do that. It exists, so it's not hard to do. Um, so that, that'll be a fun future discussion. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about test coverage? Mike, good today? Needs more for what we have? Um, yeah, always needs more. John? Yeah. More. Definitely needs more. Uh, <laughs> but like the replication issue, being able to set up all the different scenarios is a challenge that we just need to keep working on. I, so I wanted to go back to the other thing, that, like exactly what John was saying. So um, because I've, I've actually, so part of the cross-project work that I'm doing is also looking at other, expanding out third-party CI besides just Cinder. Um, also looking at uh, like Neutron, for example. Um, Neutron is actually more, in my opinion, more of a complicated um, problem than it is inside of Cinder because there are, um, like with Cinder, the most that you can have in combinations is zone manager and said fiber channel driver, and that's about it. Um, and then with, with Neutron, though, there could be a variety of switches, routers, and then, you know, whatever else that's involved. There's a variety of plugins that are involved. And so, I mean, I think that's exactly what we've been looking into is a way to actually where in those CIs we can actually trigger 
those particular tests for those certain kind of combinations of different uh, plugins or drivers um, that are involved with that test, if that makes sense. All right, we're near the end of time, so we'll call it beer 30, unless anybody in the audience has another question, a short one. If not, going once, going twice, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.